So thank you so much. Um, you were talking earlier about what we're seeing, the violence around the world. And mm. I remember um, a chief uh, police, the chief police officer in Glasgow giving a talk and he said that one of the most important things that we can do to prevent violence is to support parents in their attachment to their baby. And I think that that probably shows the power of love. Well, first of all, it's a great pleasure to be here and it's a real pleasure to be with Claire. And in a moment, we're going to start a conversation because I was introduced to Claire to write a chapter for the book that you've talked about. And her insight, her kind of theological and lived experience of spirituality and of, of love has really helped me in my thinking about the place of love in our lives and in my life and in midwifery. But what I want to say is I know that a lot of you working in the maternity services at the moment will be having a really tough time. And some of you will be working against the odds. And we don't want to make this like an ideal and that you have to achieve. It's really much more a matter of reflection and thinking and perhaps talking to each other. Um, Claire might think about this a little bit because none of us do it right. And I look back at my life and I think, oh, why did I do that? Why didn't I do that? Why did I say that? So we don't want to make this something that's an unreachable goal. We want you to think about what you're doing and the nature of love for you and in your practice. And before we start, I want to ask you if you have a story about the use of love or the experience of love or love in your practice or in your life, would you please email it? And the email to send the story to will be on the resource list. So what I want to start with before Claire and I start our conversation is a brief explanation of what humanizing childbirth is. And what we must remember is that, that love is of vital importance and that the time around birth it's a critical and sensitive period. And so it's sensitive to the experience of love, forming attachment, and it's foundational to a healthy life, well-being, productivity, loving relationships, and a prerequisite for survival. So it isn't a soft thing. It's absolutely crucial to health and well-being in the long term. And it's a test bed for all the other attachments he or she, the baby, will have in the future. And in humanizing childbirth, we recognize that childbirth is a time of promise and potential. It's a time of infinite possibilities. There is a possibility of the growth of love and optimal health and well-being into the next generation. There's hope for the best or at least a better chance in life. There's a possibility of joy, delight, ecstasy, even when the world is turned upside down in this profound life transition with physical and psychological change, changing family roles and exhaustion, chaos, employment problems, survival, money problems and housing worries that often mark parenthood. Humanizing childbirth helps keep that promise and fulfills that potential. It enables a transformative and humanizing effects of birth to individuals, the family, community, and wider society. And that broad idea of humanizing childbirth has been developed by me and many others, including um, Sue Down, Jane Sandal, and Carmen Power, who I've worked with intensely to identify what humanizing childbirth is. So we want you to think about this broad definition of humanizing childbirth through our conversation. But what I think we want to start with, Claire, is seeking a clearer idea of love, what it is, what it does. And Claire, in my conversations with you, you've talked a great deal about lovers' practice. 
not inbuilt skills, but skills that have to be learned. And I had never thought about it like that. And I think it'd be really helpful if you could tell us a little bit about what lover's practice is and what those skills are. Well, first of all, I would like to say how privileged I am to be in the company of midwives and to be working alongside yourself, Leslie. Um, I come from a very different discipline, so my focus is quite different and I've been learning so much but I think what you were talking about, love being practiced, um, it's something that I'm continuing to do and will do till the day I die. Um, I think love is a potential that is actually born within us. It's like any other potential that we have. It's something that is innately part of being a human, is the capacity to love. I think we seek love. We just are drawn to love. And we learn how to love through our primary caregivers. So when we actually become aware that we are not the centre of the world, um, we then understand that we've got to be told how to hot talk, rather, how to share, how to say we're sorry, how to um, ask for forgiveness. Um, and those are all components of what I would understand to be love. So love is a skill that needs to be learned, as with the likes of reading and writing, all the academic skills, all the musical skills, all the artistic skills, all the physical skills, they all have to be taught and nourished, first of all, by primary caregivers and then by education educationalists and that is is taught what I feel happens is that that carries on but the, the skills of love compassion and empathy we just kind of end up having to pick up by ourselves or by through osmosis um, and I think that's that's the difficult thing um, and I think over the, the centuries, the religions have actually given us a very good toolkit, all the traditional six religions, major religions of the world, have given us a wonderful toolkit of how to actually live a fulfilled and loving life. So in the Eastern traditions and Buddhism, you would have the Eightfold Path, um, which gives a very, very... Um, logical way of working out how to actually live your life as best you can for others and in the Christian traditions they talk about nurturing faith um, about giving hope and about the use of caritas which is love in action but all of these world religions always have a period of novitiate or learning that can last from anything from two to seven years. <laughs> so it's a long period of learning um, that can go on if somebody is committing themselves to, to this. And I always think of, I like to think of um, learning how to love. It's a bit like when we learn how to drive a car. We got into the car and we thought, oh, bloody hell, what am I doing here? I've got the steering to think about. I've got the or the road awareness, I've got the gears to change. Um, and we have to learn over time, over time how to do each one. So we start off very, very slowly. And then it all eventually, once we become confident, once we've learned those skills, it all comes together. Um, that in fact, we can learn to drive a car safely. And I think it is with love as well. We've got to, to learn how to be present We've got to learn how to keep all those aspects of love, which there are many, which I think we'll go on to discuss, and um, how to keep them all in tune with each other with integrity so that we can be authentically giving it, giving love anyway. And it's a bit like sometimes I know for, for me, my actions can be loving, 
but my presence can be so agitated that in fact any love coming over is absolutely rooted out because I'm so agitated and anxious. So it's about, for me, it's certainly about learning how it all goes together. Um, Claire, one of the things that you said that I think is really interesting is that we learn from our caregivers. And of course, one of the problems is that some people have caregivers, their mother or um, other, other caregiver, who can't love. And so, in fact, they don't learn from those caregivers. And also, one of the points of the beginning of love is around the time of birth, the sensitive period, the kind of physiological basis of love and the experience of giving birth lead to love of the baby and the baby loving the mother and the parents. So what do you say about that? Because that must kind of put you on the back step in terms of loving behavior. And the other thing is, I think that sometimes it's difficult to talk about love and the practice of love and we become defensive because we know that we haven't done our best. I mean, all of us who've been parents must think, oh, I wish I had done things differently. I wish I had known more. So what about those people who don't learn love from their primary caregivers in the early years of life? Very relevant to midwives. Um, yes, it, most, most definitely. I mean, that's where it, it obviously it starts. Um, I think what we are offered is the opportunity of a life to learn. And we learn from other people, not just our primary caregivers. Um, we may be at a disadvantage um, if our primary caregivers have not given us love have not surrounded us with the nurture and the care um, that is so inherent in the loving relationship. But that child may eventually bump into love in some point of the world, in some point of their life, um, and they will learn from that. I also understand that certainly from some of the work that I have done, is that um, people will at times work in opposition to what they've received. Um, that in fact, they, they're, if they're reflective people, then they will think, that's how I was treated. I, I don't want to be treated like that. And they then go on to develop their own sense of love. And I think it gets back to that inherent skill, capacity that is actually born within us to actually seek out love, to recognise love, and to then be drawn towards it. So I don't know if that kind of answers any of your questions at all. or It does. And as you're speaking... I'm thinking about the role of professionals in supporting the growth of love and actually supporting caregivers who might be having difficulty because they themselves haven't received love. And um, in the resource pack that you've got, you'll see the, the reference for this book, The New Midwifery. And I wrote a chapter together with my friend, Barb Mills, who was a child psychotherapist and we wrote a chapter called The Growth of Love and Commitment. And one of the things that we proposed for midwives is that midwives actually care and respond to the woman's needs sensitively, modeling the care that the woman, the mother, will give to her baby so she knows what it's like. And of course, that's helped a great deal by continuity of carer and a kind of consistency in forming a relationship. But also I can think about social workers actually modeling that kind of sensitivity to the needs of the other person. So I think particularly because we're talking to midwives, the potential actually of 
at working with love. Um, and I think we need to talk a little bit about the kind of language we use and the definition in a moment might be an entry point to people who haven't received love in their lives or who live in extreme poverty. Would you think that that would be the case? I would think most definitely that is the case. And if you are receiving, and I know we will talk about what, what we, we can mean by love, which can be many different things. But if you are receiving that warmth and that care, that is your door open to the possibility. Yes. And once yes. that, that is given, then you're off. You recognize it because you've I, felt it. I love that idea of the door opening. Right. Uh, opening the door. And it doesn't have to be a big thing. I remember well hearing the story of a woman doctor who'd been caring for a woman in labor. And the woman had said that she thought she couldn't go on in labor. And the, wo the woman doctor brushed her hair and the woman said, and actually it brings tears to my eyes. I heard this story years ago. And the woman said that she brushed her hair with such tenderness that she felt that she could go on. So sometimes there are small actions, I think, that convey a sense of love. But I think we're also talking about more consistency of demonstrating this sensitivity to individual needs and having the person feel what it's like and to have them as the centre of care. The kind of person who is being cared for would be really important. It's an opportunity. So I mentioned earlier, we've talked a lot about the definition of love, because I think we get confused, don't we, between the different kinds of love, particularly romantic love. And I wonder if you could tell us about some kind of different definitions of love and with a particular view to midwives or professionals. Yeah, I, I, I also love that example of the sensitivity to each individual. And I think that is a huge part of, of love. And I think it's the capacity that we need to actually grow in ourselves and the confidence to be able to respond to different people for different needs. Um, but I think there's many different facets to love. And um, the Im I work in images, I work quite visually. So the image I have of love is like this most beautiful cut diamond that just radiates off different colours and streams of colours. And that the radiation of the, the different colours are the different facets that belong to love. But love is the diamond. And I think that's kind of, um, I think it's it's important to, to actually get something in your mind of what it's not as well. And I think the love that we're talking about, although I'm very happy to be contradicted, um, is not um, the kind of love that we have of saying, oh, I just I love my new car or I love my new washing machine or, um, oh, see that chocolate bar that I just had. Oh, I just love it. Mm -hmm. That is the kind of love that we're not talking about because that for me is, well, they're brilliant. It's very self-gratifying. Self the kind of love I think we're, we're talking about here is the kind of love that is outward going. It's altruistic, not perhaps the best word, but it's an altruistic um, flowing of energy towards another person. It's something that is rooted in a deep belief that you have that you want the best for the other regardless of sometimes what is going on inside of you professionally. Um, and I think that is the kind of love that we're talking about, one that transcends our, self, our need for self-gratification, one that actually seeks to, to enhance the other's growth, development, 
fulfillment as a human being. Um, and as I say, there are many facets like compassion, care, empathy, sensitivity. It's endless. It's absolutely endless. And, you know, you could just literally get bullet points of what it contains, but it's all contained within that one diamond that is out for the other, other's goodness and well-being. Oh, it's such a lovely image, this this diamond and all the facets and light bouncing off, off the diamond. But I, I can imagine people out there listening to us and saying, oh, this is all very well, but, you know, I'm working in a situation where I'm not loved and I don't have enough time to spend time with each individual woman and family and baby and so on. And so if we think about altruistic love, isn't that something that's going to lead to burnout, to moral distress, to psychological difficulties for midwives who are actually working in systems of care that aren't loving systems? And we probably don't have time to go into it, but at some point I think we need to think about loving systems of care but what about this idea of midwives being loved by those they work with those who lead them and so on and how can we prevent this moral distress ptsd psychological problems i think when it comes to to burnout and distress um it is as you've just very clearly said it's lack of real, the real love um, by, by a system or perhaps by an individual that we are having to work with. And um, I worked in education, um, worked in secondary schools, so I certainly understand where there was level of pressure there um, that in fact the system completely um, burnt me out and I had to do an awful lot of repairing. Um, and I think burnout can be either physical exhaustion because you're being asked for too much. You just too much is being demanded of you. Or as in my case, at a couple of points in my in my life, um, anxiety and depression came about because I was actually being asked to do what I felt I wasn't competent or confident to actually do. And that caused me a de great deal of distress. So I think we have to take great care of the people coming in to professions um, to actually look out that, in fact, again, sensitivity, sensitivity towards a learner, um, learning how to do the job, how to do the skills, the medical skills of the job, let alone how to love somebody that's your foremost is on the when you first come into a post you surely your foremost is on getting the job done adequately and properly um, and then you can actually develop the the I don't know the components of love I also think that systems uh, there, there's I think we had spoken about this at some point there's systems and they have different kinds of energies in them and I believe that we are all made up of different kinds of energies within ourselves and if we look at the universe we see two very very powerful energies at work there we see the energy that is growthful that is expansion that is life-giving that creates environments for where worlds can actually be created and life can be promoted but we also have black hole systems which suck things towards them they then when they're going into a black hole they elongate them and then they take them in to suck them in to nothingness and I think sometimes I feel and have felt in some of the systems I've worked in I can only assume that it can be similar in midwifery but I've worked in black hole systems where I have been stretched to the point that I no longer recognize myself and then in that, I have no longer the strength to actually stand up for what I value. 
And then I get sucked into the black hole of nothingness and destruction. And I think when we've got that kind of system, I think we then need to look at um, what is burnout all about. It's loss of connection. It's loss of shared values. And it's a loss of sense of belonging to a group, which is all human needs. Um, and I think we need to find ways in system to promote how do we connect? How do we have forums for shared values? How do we um, ha have a sense of belonging? Um, and also self-care. I mean, I could go on forever and we don't have time. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I think it might be worth us speaking briefly, Claire, about self-care because Michelle O'Don, who wrote the book Scientification of Love, talks about um, love, love for others, love of self and love of the earth. And love of self is really important. And you and I had a little bit of a conversation about self, self care. And I think it might be worth just speaking very briefly about midwives, because I certainly have had that sense of being pulled into a black hole, of having all of the energy sucked out of me through trying to transform organisations. I've had opposite experiences as well. And there'll be a lot of people out there who've had that experience. So could you just talk very briefly about self-care and what midwives might do if they're in that situation at the moment? I, I think one of the... One of the obvious things, I suppose, I don't know if it is that obvious, but it's actually finding somebody that you really trust to talk about. And if you're in a, a profession, it's usually somebody that you can trust professionally um, that is going to provide a very, very safe place for you where you can actually let your, your guard down. You can be authentically real with all your fears, all your anxieties, um, all your mistakes um, and you can actually look at how how that has affected you and how you are going to best take care of yourself and it could be something like perhaps you need time out perhaps you actually need to build into your day moments of quiet moments of physical rest and um, perhaps it's actually trying to wean ourselves off what is, you know, accepted as ways of de-stressing, like the use of alcohol, um, that's not going to help in any way if somebody is, is reached that burnout stage, um, but it's all too easy to go in that direction. So finding somebody that you trust, that is knows your profession, but is not going to report back to the system. Um, how do I take care of myself if I've got if a young family or if I've got an older family or if I'm on my own, you know, whatever the situation is, how do I care? How do I nourish myself? How do I find the times to actually do the things or have the conversations that are going to give me life or to just share the fears that I have and the authenticity of me? with somebody who cares and loves me and is going to say, you're all right. You're quite right in feeling what you're feeling. So I don't know if that helps. Really helps a lot, Claire. Um, Sue, we're, we're almost finished. I, um, Claire, Claire and I uh, only met recently and we had a whole day together recently and we just didn't stop talking. We're talking a lot on the phone and emailing each other. So. I'm really enjoying these insights. So I just wanted to sum up a little bit. Um, and Claire, it's been such a delight having this conversation with you. So I just wanted to sum up by reminding us that love is one of the greatest energies. And in bringing love into practice and the environment and supporting the growth of love in the family, midwives are really powerful, but they also have the possible possibility of negative power if we disrupt that love. In the resource pack, I've put a couple of articles on the importance of physiology as a basis. 
to love and the attachment between mother and baby and well-being and they are really important so sorry I've got my timer on because I lose track of time <laughs> and I, I wanted to say also that we have to remember that there's a uniqueness to every baby every family this is a life that will never be again this baby will never be born again and there is a unique potential being fulfilled when I talked to Claire about it, she said, this is sacred, it's holy ground. There is vulnerability, but also possibility. And how does a midwife never lose that sense of awe? And finally, I want to talk about love of our work. I've now been in midwifery for a long time. And believe me, there have been times I wanted to give up. And always I find somebody who's been touched by the work of a midwife. Mm. And love of our work, I think, is probably one of the greatest gifts that we can have. Thanks very much, Claire. Sue, thanks very much for Thank inviting you. us.